loss of trust. I understand after the Four Corners investigation into retirement villages in 2017, IRT was actually one of the few operators that managed to increase its sales. How did you counter that, uh, the damage from the loss of trust with your staff and residents and family? Um, I think the main thing is y you don't start from scratch. So we had um, good management and, and good facilities. Um, obviously, like a lot of the people in the room, we invest in our facilities quite heavily to make sure they're fit for purpose. Um, I think it's a benefit too, though, in the context of the environment. Um, we're a secular not-for-profit. Uh, we're community-owned. Um, we trade very heavily off that, of course, as you'd expect, um, as part of our, our mandate. But also, too, in that environment, you had... Um, you know, a lot of the churches have come under scrutiny because of their own Royal Commission um, around institutional child abuse, etc. Um, we had, you know, other things in place. But I think for us, we've got a long history of looking what the signals are from the market uh, and from government. And, you know, as a former CEO of a peak body, n industries don't always see the signals so well. Uh, and governments lead by two ways. One's policy and the other one's funding. Um, so we look at what the signals are and we try and move with that. So things like plain English contracts, um, six monthly buybacks we're already doing, things like that, um, which have come out now um, you know, through the various regulatory reviews. We were probably a little bit ahead of the curve, um, but again, room of smart people and smart operators are catching up to us in that, that respect, which is great. Um, so it's also to that, that bias towards our, our residents. Um, you know, we, we do make sure we're trying to do our best by our residents um, and that's a key, I think you heard Lynn this morning um, talking about how you do improve their life um, and making sure you're part of that. Doesn't mean we get it right all the time either, Lauren, to be honest. Um, I still get complaints, don't worry. <laughs> um, so within that is, is taking those lessons and working through it. Um, and I think too, quite a fact, the fr apart from the fact that um, the Commission may be very focused on residential and, and home care, um, it will start to impact uh, the retirement industry via duty of care and other areas. And we had a quick chat outside about some of the, the state-based regulation and the scope of that now around your requirements for duty of care, but also, too, what will come from the Royal Commission in that respect. So I think we're all on notice. Um, there's a lot of signals coming from a lot of places and catching them and, and synthesising them can be difficult. That's why the RLC, laser, AXA, those guys are important uh, to be contemporary and synthesise and understand what that means. Um, but for us, I think the trust quotient was already embedded in what we do. Um, it's actually keeping the trust. You can lose it very quickly. And that's where we work really hard to make sure that we're keeping trust at a level that's you know, commensurate with our effort. Um, and also too, we've still got to be sustainable. So explaining changes, all those sorts of things um, is a lot of heavy lifting. Um, but again, as Lynn said, it's got to be high touch and we try and do that. And again, we're not always getting it right, so we've got to keep on iterating on, on that effort. Yeah, uh, certainly. Um, with the uh, trust, obviously, um, you mentioned more regulation. Anita, um, it would seem that more regulation seems like a guarantee at this point, or that the sector will actually need to put in place um, it itself. Is your expectation that there is going to be increased regulation and um, are these new regulations um, that have already come through that we've seen, so the, the new quality standards that started on 1st of July, um, we've also seen the amended principles around restraint and so on. Are these working? Are they improving trust? Yeah, really good question. Look, there have been a number of regulatory changes over the last Oh, pretty much ever since I've started working in the sector, but particularly the last couple of years, as well as the ones you mentioned, Lauren, we've had changes to transparency in home care pricing. We've had a new charter of rights come out in the aged care sector uh, in just in the last year. And certainly I think there's just going to be more and more regulation. I think even if we don't see any sort of immediate changes to the rules until the commission is finalised, I think we'll see more focus, particularly around the use of restraints. Uh, one of the things that came through very um, strongly in the Royal Commission was a questioning about uh, the use of chemical restraint. There was evidence that it's not effective, that it is actually harmful in the majority of cases and that it's overused in the sector. So they have introduced some new rules around it. However, I think they're also going to actually apply more scrutiny about um, the prescribing of them anyway. In terms of 
actually building trust. I don't see much evidence of the regulation so far building trust. If anything, I think trust really is at a bit of a low point for the aged care sector. It's been there for a couple of years, but I haven't seen much improvement in that myself. We had the Governance Institute of Australia last week publish some data saying that 42% of Australians perceive board directors and executives of aged care as unethical. And when it comes to the organisations themselves, it was 38% see the organisations as unethical versus 36% see them as ethical. So you can see that lack of trust born out there. Just in my own experience, we have, I think, just an unprecedented number of what I call difficult family member cases at the moment, where you've got everything from the family members who come in and sort of scream at staff and management in front of, you know, in the dining room, to the keyboard warriors who send off you know, 14 emails overnight demanding an immediate response or else I'm going to the Royal Commission, I'm going to the media. Then you've got, of course, the people that are sneaking in, the hidden cameras, that's still happening um, lots. And while it's almost, gen it's almost always illegal, um, the police are very rarely getting involved in it and we know that the media very much like to, like to use that footage. So I, I don't so far, unfortunately, see much of an improvement in trust um, resulting for the regulations. And if anything, more regulations means more things we can get wrong and more ways we can be called out for being non-compliant, which I think just then further damages that trust. Do you want to chime in? I can yeah, I just you. want to chime in on that one. I guess the other thing for me too is if you look at the RLC Code of Conduct, um, you know, I, there's a thousand villages have signed up, which I think is fantastic. But those of you who are wondering whether you should or whether you shouldn't, this is your opportunity to actually regulate yourselves. If you don't regulate yourselves, government will, state and federal. So this is your chance to get on the ground and actually, um, you know, raise the bar. That's the theme of the conference. Um, and if you choose not to, that's okay too. But just expect that regulation will flow from this, whether it's a Royal Commission, whether it's the reviews into elder abuse, whether it's a regulatory review of the Villages Act, it doesn't matter, but this is your chance to self-regulate. It's a lot of heavy lifting, it's a lot of work, I understand, but it's probably less than what a government will make you do for nothing. Um, so I would encourage you to, to self-regulate before somebody else does. Mm. Rachel, obviously you're coming at this from a different perspective. You're working with families and customers every day. What's your view on building trust? Yeah, uh, I, I agree with Patrick. Having worked across retirement living and aged care for more than 15 years, it's, it, it, it is the time for the industry to, to regulate themselves or be regulated. I think um, the, the government will watch um, and act and if they're satisfied that the industry are doing a good enough job, then they won't get involved. But it's, it's a very dangerous place to be when, um, when the government come in because they don't necessarily understand the nuances and more regulation typically means uh, restrictions on how you can trade. But I think from the consumer's point of view, um, trust, trust is patchy in the market. There, there are operators that consumers trust and there are operators that consumers don't trust. And I think for operators, it's really about being very clear and very transparent with your customer about who you are and what you do and what you have to offer. And, and even to the point of saying what you don't do. I think traditionally the industry have wanted to um, to please prospective residents and the prospective resident might say, well, you know, can I get home care? And the, the operator will say, yes, absolutely, that's fine, you know, because they're, they're trying to, to close the sale. But I think it's really important if you need to rebuild trust to be very clear with your customers about what you do and what you don't do. And that way, it, it you know, it doesn't lead to nasty surprises down down the track. But then I think... Once you've defined that, once you've defined who you are and what you do, um, whether that's by defining also what you don't do, it's so important that you walk the talk. That, that's what consumers are looking at and they're looking at what was I told versus what did I get? And when there's a difference in that, that's when they lose trust. So I would say to the industry, be very clear and, and don't over promise and under deliver if anything try and do the opposite try and say well the you know this is what we will do and if there's an opportunity to over deliver on that then then do that yeah so 
don't make promises you can't keep. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs>